He's good this morning. We need to brag on him. He's done a lot for us. Been good to everybody in here. I thought about Brother Charlie. I've been praying for him. And uh, we never know one day to the next when we wake up what life has got in store for us. You could be in health today and wake up in the morning and not be able to move. Boy, our prayer life would increase then, wouldn't it? It'd get better real quick if that was going on. I thought about this week as we've traveled and been across many states and, and seen many things. I was reminded uh, back in uh, during 9-11 when uh, we had the terrible tragedy that happened in New York City. As I stood there in that place and began to reminisce and think about what it would have been like there that day when that happened. And I thought, you know, only body can help in these kinds of times is the Lord Jesus. And uh, our nation cried out for prayer and asked for people to pray. But how easily we forget when things get better and things are cleaned up and things are taken away. And we don't remember what we've been through. But I'm going to tell you, the devil is out to kill, to steal, and destroy. Amen? And the Lord has put a message up on my heart today for you and for me. I'm glad it began with me and, and it spoke to my heart and it's helped me. And I've been excited about coming and preaching it today. If you'll pray real hard, I'll get done real quick. But if you don't, I may preach an hour now. I'm telling you, this message is a lot bigger in this building. I can't hardly contain it this morning. But if the Lord preaches, we'll get something out of it. If he don't, we'll go to the house. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter this morning. It's where I want to be with the help of the Lord and the Word of God. I'm so unworthy to stand in this place today and brag on Him. I thought about how He would call and choose somebody like me that ain't worthy. I'm not worthy, but I'm glad for the blood of Jesus that's made us worthy. Boy, if you could do something in the house of God, you ought to thank the Lord this morning because he's blessed you to do that. And we ain't worthy to hold a single title, do a single thing in the house of the Lord out in this world. But I'm glad that he come to, to call the righteous, amen. He come to call sinners to repentance and call the righteous to work and get them to work and get them to help and win the people to him. But I love him this morning. I don't know if I can do anything or not this morning, but I feel like I ain't been in church for a month. I missed one service and I feel like I ain't, something's wrong. I don't know about you, but I can't, I can't go and not uh, go to church. I love to be in the house of God. I love to be around God's people and what they mean to me. I appreciate the Lord and I, His sweet Holy Spirit. But if you would, and I can, let's stand this morning for the reading of God's Word. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to break in about the ninth verse with the help of the Lord. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, or nor adulterers, nor effeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of what? That's awful quiet this morning. I, under, I underlined all this in my Bible because we were like this. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by that Spirit of God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Can I read that again? Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined unto a harlot is one body for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, ever sin that a man doth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against the body. What does all this mean, Brother Gary? I'm going to read these next two verses and I hope they'll help you. This is where our message comes from today. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, And ye are not your own. Ye are not your own this morning, church. I highlighted this next verse and put in parentheses in my Bible. For ye are... (laughs) For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let us pray. Brother Luke, ask a blessing on the message. Yes, Lord. Amen. You can be seated. I'm telling you this morning, the devil is a liar and the father of it. And he's deceiving and trying to deceive God's people and bring God's people down. I've seen some things in the last two weeks that have broke my heart. And I've wondered what in the world is going on. But I know that the Bible says in the last days perilous times will come. The Bible says that things are going to get worse and worse. It doesn't say it's going to get better and better. But it's going to get worse and worse. But when we see things and it comes uh, full view in our eyes, then it comes to reality of what the Scriptures is talking about, especially how the devil is a deceiver uh, this morning. I'm going to tell you, when we fall trapped to uh, to the devil, the devil will rob you of your very joy. Yes, you're born again. Yes, you're saved. But I'm telling you this morning, he is after your joy. Can I hear from you this morning? Uh, Why is he after my joy this morning? It's because we've allowed him to get in and get a hold of our joy this morning. A lot of times we'll go in places and do things we shouldn't do. We'll say things we shouldn't say. And we'll be a part of things we shouldn't be a part of. Does God's people do that? You better believe they do it. Because we're of a sin nature. If we'll listen to the flesh, we'll cleave to the flesh and it'll lead us down the wrong road. But if we'll lean to the Spirit, lean not to our own understanding and listen to Him, He'll lead us in all ways of truth and righteousness. Can I hear from you this morning? I'll tell you what our problem is as a church as a whole. Not just Vickers Chapel, but I'm talking around the world as a whole. What's wrong this morning is that we've put up signs in our life and we told the devil we're for sale is the problem this morning you might as well be walking around with this sign in your hand when the devil comes to your house you're standing there just like this that's why the devil's there because you're selling out for what the devil is giving you need to turn the sign around and tell the devil listen devil I'm not for sale I'm not going to those places. I'm not saying those things. I'm not doing those things. I'm not doing that against my brother and against my sister. I'm going to love them. I'm going to care for them. I'm going to pray for them. I'm not for sale, devil. That's the problem this morning. A lot of God's people are selling out and doing the things of the devil and being led of the devil. We don't need to do that, but we need to stand on the Word of God. We need to know that God has a will for our lives. And we can't be a part of the world. We've got to be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Can I hear from you this morning? 
Over in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, the Bible says to come out from among the world. Touch not the unclean things. He said, and I will receive you. Now, how can I be pleasing to God sitting in a beer joint? How could I do that? How could I be turning up a a, a Budweiser beer and claiming to be a child of God when there's a sinner sitting across the way, knows where I go to church at, knows me, and sees what I'm doing? Am I being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? No, I'm selling out to the devil is what I'm doing. Tell you what sin will do. It will separate. It's a, it's a breaker between you and God. It will break a relationship between you and God. I'm telling you this morning. It will rob you of everything you got. If you'll give in to sin. You're walking around and telling the devil. I'm for sale. I'm for sale devil. Come over here to my house. We got things for sale. What things you got for sale? I got, I got my attitude for sale. The devil said, oh yeah, you got your attitude. Yeah, I got my attitude for sale. The devil said, well, I'm buying. And he'll come right on in and he'll show you what a bad attitude's about. You know what he'll do? He'll make you start thinking about the things the preacher's been preaching about. The things the preacher's been doing. And get you real upset and get your attitude real bad. Why? Because you've sold it to him. When the devil comes around knocking on your heart and telling you how bad a job the pastor's doing, how bad a job the preachers are doing, how bad a job the deacons are doing, you need to tell the devil, we're not for sale. I'm not listening to that. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll do what? Flee. The Bible also says that at the name of Jesus, the demons tremble in fear at that very name. I'm glad this morning there's no name. Like the name of Jesus. No name like the name of Jesus. And I thought about when I was standing in the middle of New York City. Not one time did I hear the name Jesus until I got to Times Square. I got down to Times Square where all those people were at. We was rubbing shoulder to shoulder and all this stuff going on and billboards and flashing and the big tall buildings. Here this old country preacher was standing in the middle of all this. And I look over here and here was a wad of sin. And over here was sin and there was sin. And everywhere I turned, I about had to walk with my head down. But all of a sudden I look and there stands a young man right in the middle of Times Square. Seeing Jesus is the only way. He's the way. He's the truth. He's alive. Don't listen to these bunch of sodomites and all these that are protesting against God. We need to stand for Jesus. And I stand in there shaking my head like, oh yeah, go man, go. He was speaking their language. He was from there. And then and I got to thinking about all those people there. And I could look through the crowd and there was one over here, maybe one there, one over here. And they shaking their head and agreeing. But the majority of that crowd had their eyes fixed on the sin that was going on around in that place. The Bible says, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And there'll be many that'll be on that path and that are on that path today. But narrow is the way that leadeth to life everlasting. I found out anymore there's just a few that want to go to heaven. There's just a few that want to live for God. There's just a few that will stand and make a stand in these last days. But I'm telling you this morning, church, we are in the last days. As sure as my name is what it is, we are in the last moments of time. Jesus could come at this very moment. I wonder where you stand if Jesus was to come today. I hope you can remember a time when you came and confessed Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And you can remember that change that came into your life. And that seal that was put upon your life. The devil ever since has been trying to peck around around your seal and trying to get it loose. But I'm glad he can't do a thing with it. Amen. He can pick and probe all he wants, but I'm glad that we're sealed in the Lord. The devil can't do nothing with it. But he said to choose you this day in whom you're going to serve. I believe it'd be God's will that we commit our lives totally to God. Will we sin and fall short of the glory of God? You better believe it. I've probably fell short many times this week. And no doubt you have fallen short this week. But I'm glad that we can have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's just to forgive us 
forgiveness of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm glad there ain't nothing we've done that He ain't went to the cross and paid for. Amen. He said, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, but to pray to Him. Amen. Is anybody here this morning? I'm glad I've trusted Him as my Lord and Savior. It ain't easy to walk with God. It ain't easy to stand up. But in these last days, you need to stand up. You need to be the one that is above everybody else. You need to tell them and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to make a difference in what God is doing in my life. Stand up for Jesus in these last days. Probably we don't want to stand up. We don't want nobody looking at us. Lord, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to get down here where nobody can see me. I want to hide so nobody can see what I'm doing. I'm telling you this morning, what is hid here will be brought out there. Be sure, the Bible said, your sins will find you out. Oh, Lord, Brother Gary, you're getting awful hard this morning. I'm giving you exactly what the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me to bring this morning. Number one, I'm going to tell you, there was a debt paid for you. We forgot about that, ain't we? There was a debt paid. Over in Romans 5, 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death was pronounced upon all men, for all have sinned. We're all sinners, church. Every single one of us are sinners. It's just by the grace of God that we're saved. He didn't have to save us. Brother Scott, he didn't have to save you. If you and I got what we deserve, we'd be in hell right now. Hell is where we'd be. But by the grace of God, he saw fit to save him. And him and me and you. And he'll save you that are here this morning lost without him. If you'll come, you've got to come the same way we came. And that's through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except through and by me. That's the only way we can come this morning. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have. I actually heard a lady say one time, and she had never sinned. I said, well, there was the first one. I said, because that's contrary to the Word of God. Well, I do my best. I, t- I can't think of anything I'm doing wrong. I said, right there's the first one. Because we all do wrong. We sin and don't even know we're sinning. Why? Because we're of a sin nature. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the only way out. And we're getting out of this old mess. You need to look at the devil and say, there was a debt paid. I'm not for sale, devil. He'd love to come to your house. Before the day's over, he's going to come knocking. I promise you that. Wait till you go to lunch and they burn your lunch real good for you. What kind of attitude are you going to have then? The devil's going to come knocking. You know what we got to do? We got to check our attitudes. Know that there was a debt paid. Number two, there was a price paid. There wasn't just a debt made, but there's a price that has been paid. John 3, 17, the Bible says, For God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. There are going to be those that won't be saved. I hope and pray that not anybody in this building will not be one of those. I pray that we'll all be saved. We'll all go in the rapture. I pray that I'll see every single one of you in heaven. But I dare to say that's not going to happen. They may be one in this building today that say, Brother Gary, I don't really know if I'm saved. I don't know if God was to send his son right now if I'd really go to heaven. Well, I'll tell you what, there's still time. And you can make sure before you leave here today that everything's right. If I didn't know, I'd make sure I knowed before I left this building. If you're under the sound of my voice, I'd make sure things was right 
between me and God. Someday you're going to hear the last sermon. Someday you'll hear the last song. You'll receive the last invitation and it'll finally be over. You'll slip right off into eternity and you'll be like the rich man or you'll wake up in the bosom of the Lord. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We have an illustration through the Bible when he talks about the rich man. He talks about he lifted his eyes and held immediately being in torment. I'm telling you, heaven is real. But not only is heaven real, hell is also real. You can't have one without the other. Acts 8.32, the Bible says, the place of the scripture which is read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb dumb before his shears. So he opened not his mouth. There was a price paid that you could be here this morning. There was a price paid where you didn't have to be for sale. There's a price paid where you can overcome no matter what comes your way if you'll trust the Lord if you'll live for God. But our problem is, it's easier to lay back in sin than it is to sacrifice for the cause of Christ. I'm telling you this morning, there's a price paid. Over in Isaiah 53, 5, the Bible says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of his peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes this morning, we are healed. There's a great price that has been paid. And that's the reason when the devil comes asking if you're for sale, you didn't need to say, devil, I'm not for sale. They've been a price paid. I'm not for sale, devil. I don't know what you've come for, but I'm not for sale. You need to tell him that. I want to set this out here this morning. I wonder if you're walking around with this displayed in your life like this. If the devil's thinking, there's me somebody for sale. There's one of them Christians that's let down. There's one of them that won't live right. I'm going to their house. And guess what? He'll bring plenty of problems with him when he comes. You need to be prayed up. You need to be ready to face the adversary. You need to what the Bible talks about over in Ephesians chapter 6. You need to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to overcome the fiery darts of Satan. And if you don't think they're fiery darts, hold on, it's about to happen. He's already got you in his sights and he's ready. He's done pulled the bowl back and he's ready to let you have it. What are you going to do when it comes to your house? Are you going to sit down? Are you going to quit? Anybody can quit. Can I tell you all that this morning? Anybody can quit. It takes a real woman and a real man of God that can press through the fire and keep going for God. In these last days, we're going to have to stand up. I thought about when I stood there in that city and there were so many people. I thought, I'm just one voice in this city. And then the Lord showed me that young man preaching the gospel. I thought, man, I'm glad somebody's standing up for the Lord. I was just a visitor, but it amazed me to see what was going on in one place. It may all be good right here at Vickers Chapel. We all in our safety right here. But I'm telling you, there's much, as much sin running rampant right here in this valley as they are in New York City. You may not be seeing it with your own eyes, but I could take you down to the police department. I could take you down to Kingsport Police Department and it would probably shock you if they told you what was going on in this valley and in Kingsport. I'm telling you, church, sin is running rapid. And us as children of God need to stand in these last days because they've been a debt uh, been paid, a price has been paid. And not only that, number three, there's a purchase that's been made for you and I. We've been purchased with a price, the Bible says. Over in Matthew 27, we see there where the soldiers took Jesus and they took him out and they scourged him and they whipped him and he shed the blood for you and I. And over there it talks about how they led him to that hill that is called Calvary and there they crucified him there. He paid the ultimate price and he paid that debt and he purchased you and I with his precious blood this morning. And it's the least that you and I could do. It's to live for Him in these last days. 
and tell the devil we're not for sale. I'm going to tell you right now, this church is not for sale. I'm going to fight for this church. If every one of you's quit, I'm going to fight for this church. I'm going to fight for this battleground. I've got to stand and fight while there's time, while we can win people to God. And I need soldiers that will stand shoulder to shoulder with me. And let's fight together and win people for God in these last days. Your children are going to hell and our children and your grandchildren and mommies and daddies and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles are going to hell. Why? Because we won't tell them that Jesus paid a price and he's purchased us with his precious blood. This morning, I I don't want us to forget about this price that's been paid for you and I. He's paid an ultimate price that you and I can be saved and go to this place that's called heaven. I thought about a quote uh, I'm going to read to you this morning. I hope this will help you. John MacArthur quoted this, and I loved it. He said, Satan continues... Uh, continues his efforts to make sin less offensive, heaven less appealing, hell less horrifying, and the gospel less urgent. That's the truth this morning. That's the devil's job. He's trying to get us to sell out. Is what he's trying to do. Don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Sin's not that big a deal. It won't hurt nothing. Go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Live the way you want to live. God will understand. He'll love you anyhow. I'm going to tell you this morning, we have broken the heart of God. I thought many times, how many times have I broken the heart of God? And I said, Lord, let me live a life that would honor you and bless you and bring glory and honor to your name. Even, Lord, when I ain't in the pulpit, when I ain't in the church, God, let me walk a path that people see you in my life and the devil will realize that I'm not for sale. He won't come to my house that often. He'll still come even if he, he knows there's nothing for sale. He'll still come to your house. But you're going to have to stand up and say, Devil, we're not giving in. We're not backing down. We're pushing forward until that great King of kings and the Lord of lords calls us out of this life. We're going to push through for Him. I saw that quote and I said, I, I want to be so full of God that when a mosquito uh, to bites my arm and draws the blood out of me, that it'll fly away saying, there's power in the blood. That's what I want. That's how full of God I want to be. How about you this morning? Do you want just enough of God to get you through? Do you want just to get close enough that to just get you through? I'm telling you this morning, you ought to want to do all you can for God. Live as close as you can live. Go tell those that are dying and going to hell that Jesus loves them. Won't you come and get saved? One preacher I know, every time he meets somebody, I mean, you take him to a restaurant and get ready to go sit down. Here come the waitress and start taking the order. He'll reach up and say, how are you doing today? Are you bored again? (laughs) He'll look and say, what? Are you saved? He don't care. He tells them right up. And I thought, make me feel about that big. Now that's boldness. But you know what he's doing? He's being a good soul winner for Christ. And each and every single one of us in this building today could be the same way. I ain't asking you to go up and stand on a table in the middle of a restaurant and start squalling and hollering. But listen to that Holy Spirit. And God, all of a sudden, you'll be doing something. You'll feel the Lord push on you and say, go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to say, what, Lord? What do you want? You know what he wants. Be a witness for the Lord. Devil's devil trying to get you to be for sale. Don't say nothing. You're happy where you're at. Don't be like that. Say, Lord, yes, I'll go. Lord, send me. I'll be the one. I'll be your witness. I'll stand up for you. Even though everybody else won't, Lord, I'll stand for you. You know why? Because one day, Jesus stood for you with outstretched arms. 
while the blood ran down his arms and down his side and off his feet. He shed every bit of that so you and I could be here this morning. I'm not worthy to even speak his name. But I've told the devil this week, I ain't for sale. I don't care what he's got to offer. I ain't interested. Because we're going to live for God. And we're going to honor God as we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Hallelujah.